Good morning kids, today we're taking our brand new video from the film fizz about the hidden law in skip it da toilet Huh, you know I had been seeing those videos going around and I am surprised that they became so popular so fast But I mean if you like it you like it so there's clearly a market for it So let's see what even MadPat was able to find in in these toilets my theory is ridiculous, 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 ridiculous. And it's loud as all heck. What the hell is that? Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that ne needs you to skibbity dom dom that subscribe button. Yes. Yes. Oh, if you haven't seen the hey. astronomical rise of the series Skibbity Toilet over the last few months, get your head out of the toilet and let me tell you that no one, and I mean no one, has seen this much success so quickly on YouTube before. As I write this episode, the yeah. channel's creator Defa, uh, I can't say his name, can I? Fine. How about I make it classier for you? Defuk Bohem is getting somewhere between <laughs> 3 and 4 billion views a month with a B. Those are numbers that are so big they Dude. make Mr. Beast blush. And it's not just a lot of random views either. People are sticking around for this thing. The channel what had about the? 1 and a quarter million subscribers when it posted the first Skibbity Toilet video back in February. Now, just 5 months later, it's already past 20 million. Dude. So, yeah, to say that this thing has taken over YouTube, it'd be a major understatement. Yeah. And one of the episodes one of the titular skibbity toilets literally destroys youtube hq in a not so subtle metaphor for how this show has broken the website skibbity toilet God. has fully taken advantage of youtube's push for shorts content and it has rode that wave to create a level of virality that has never been seen before so those are the numbers but what is it well it's a head in a toilet yep it's and a gmod it. animation singing a song. The internet is truly a weird and wonderful place. That's all no, it takes. If I'm being completely serious, that's just how the whole thing starts. As the series goes on, the whole thing evolves into a full-on cinematic war between toilets with human heads and people with camera heads. Complete with massive titans, mind control, and, wait for it, hidden oh lore. <laughs> and I gotta say, after binging every episode of the series multiple times, getting that darn song permanently etched into my brain, what became clear to me was that this goofy oh. Oh meme show wasn't just about being lol so random. It's also not content just remaining as an epic toilet action anime. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Probably should rephrase that yeah, one. Instead, there's no. an entire what meta this? story buried in this thing. A story about the changing world of entertainment and the fight for survival of art. Yeah, this... <laughs> this man's face in the toilet He's trying to teach us a profound lesson about the meaning of art. And once you see the story that's hiding I right in front of your eyes, it becomes clear where the story is ultimately gonna end. So grab your Knob toilets, plungers, and KPRL speakers, loyal theorists, as we flush ourselves deep into the fever dream that is Skibbity Toilet. Now, the details yeah, for explain. the base story here are pretty straightforward. The whole thing starts when a man's head appears out of a toilet and starts singing a mashup of the 2007 song Give It To Me by Timbaland and the 2022 Turkish song called Dom Dom Yes Yes by Bisser King. But things quickly escalate from there. The toilet heads start to spread. Pretty soon, we see an army of these toilets marching, or rather, sliding their way down the street Slotted. military yeah. parade style. They clearly pose a threat considering they run over people, they shoot lasers, they even oh transform God. humans into more skibbity toilets. Pretty soon they've established their own cult-like religion, a police presence, they even have themselves a leader of the army in the form of the G-Man from Half-Life. For those of you who don't know, in the Half-Life games, the G-Man is described as this sinister, interdimensional bureaucrat, and he has this strange reality-bending yeah. power, so why not just throw him into a show about evil toilet men? Very quickly it becomes apparent yeah. that the people of this okay. universe are no match for the toilet terrors. By the time episode 6 rolls around, we pretty much stop seeing humans all together. Enter the cameramen. People with cameras for heads. Pretty self-explanatory. But it quickly yeah. becomes clear that these Very characters cool. serve both literally and figuratively as our point of view. Pretty much all episodes are shown from the perspective of one of these cameramen, often ending with the POV character either giving a thumbs up to one of their comrades or being killed at the hands of one of the skibbity toilets. This ragtag group of cameramen oh, have made it their mission to eliminate the skibbity scourge. They form an organized militia. They 
Fortnite dance away from the police, and then they form <laughs> unlikely alliances with the other species that inhabit this world. Make me the laugh. speaker men and the TV men. Two other groups of creatures that are just here for some reason. Probably better suited for a radio shack than the front lines. And together yeah, they plan funny. to protect the planet from these porcelain pirates. And yeah, that's pretty much about it in terms of broad strokes. The rest of the series basically follows a fairly standard formula. Well, I mean, as standard as a show about sentient monsters from Bed Bath and Beyond gets. We constantly yeah. see the cameraman inventing some new technology. I mean, this is honestly so freaking crazy with someone that probably was made in 20 minutes. Okay, no, probably not 20 minutes, maybe a few hours, but still... Their Explosion. giant kicking boss robots. In turn, the toilets repurpose the discarded remains of their fallen foes to become more and more powerful. This cycle of escalation repeats over and over again, eventually That's leading to where we currently are in the story with giant kaiju level battles between the G Man toilet and the various Titan robots that are created or partnered with the cameraman. And that, Ooh. to 99.9999% of people, is what the story of the series is. But I'm here to tell you, it is so much more than that. The battle between the toilet heads and the cameraman is really simple symbolic of the battle between YouTube content and traditional medias like the film industry. Yes, Ooh. I'm feeling okay, and no, I don't want your long-sleeved jacket, even though it looks very pleasant and warm. Skibbity Toilet is, <laughs> at its little. core, a story about how entertainment is changing, and how the series creator Defic Boem is gonna be the one that merges those two worlds together. It sounds insane, right? I know! That's why I'm so excited about this one! Let me explain it to you. Go ahead. <laughs> Oops. Hold on, we'll be right back. And we're back. You might or might not know, this series is littered with models, assets, and references to an age gone by on the internet. An age before YouTube. Yeah, for our Gen Z and, and frankly most of our millennial audience, there was a time where internet videos didn't solely exist under the careful watch of Google and YouTube. In the beginning, the world of internet video was splintered off from each other. Sites like Newgrounds, Albino Black Sheep, and Ebombs World is where you'd go to find uh, memes, classic. viral videos, and animations. This is where internet meme culture truly began. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie, we're going to Candy Mountain. Not to be too oh, internet cool. boomer about it, but there was a time that when you saw a funny video, you'd have to send it to your friends via email. Yeah, that platform that your parents use for work these days, it used to be where you got all your lols from, like the Numa Numa guy and I'm a snake. And one of the biggest styles of video that arose <laughs> from this early internet age was the genre that would eventually come to be known as the YouTube poop. Ironically enough, the style of a YouTube poop just predated the age of YouTube. These videos would involve oh, taking yeah. clips or assets from TV, film, and music and just mash them all together into an unholy stream of consciousness. There's only one real solution to this mess. Um, a stray Christmas tree? A coop with hail! Oh no, Luigi! We gotta get rid of this trash before it turns me all the way into a Koopa! Wow! What? The internet back then, very different, but still very much yeah, the same. Look at By this. the way, I didn't edit that clip at all. That is it unedited in its 240p goodness. Did these videos that make sense? So no. Bad. Was it insane? <laughs> Absolutely. Did any of it matter? Who cared? Anything goes. It was the earliest days of online video. <laughs> For the first time in history, you could literally make anything you wanted and upload it to a website. Anything that came out of your head. In the 80s and 90s, if you wanted to make your own movie, you needed a video camera, the ability to cut and edit film, a mm -hmm. platform to share your creations, all of which were either prohibitively expensive, difficult to achieve, or quite frankly just didn't exist. In the yeah, early 2000s though, free software like Windows Movie Maker opened up the world of filmmaking to a wider audience than ever. One company that really embraced the wild west nature of the internet was Valve. Today they're best known for creating Steam, but back in the day, believe it or not, they used to make video games. Really? They were responsible for tentpole series like Half-Life, Counter-Strike, Portal, Team Fortress, Dota. Valve dominated I know they did. the I gaming made a joke. scene. And the one game that truly embodied both their gaming ethos and their embrace of the online was Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod was a sandbox game where players could mess around with the physics, objects, and assets found in Valve's popular franchises, and then use those to create nice. their own little movies, games, and shorts. This eventually evolved into the creation of Source Filmmaker in 2013, a video editing tool that allowed creators to more easily create funny videos just like they had with Gary's Mod. And this proved to be a godsend hmm. for YouTube poop creators. If you've ever seen a video featuring characters from Team Fortress 2 doing insane things, it was probably created using Ooh, SFM. Thing. 
<laughs> In fact, Defouk Boem, creator of Skibdy Toilet, as we all know, originally made a name for himself online by making these sorts of videos, SFM content exactly like this. I mean, unless I'm wrong, Skibbity Toilet seems like it still is being created in SFM. So I why mean, the big trip yeah. down memory lane? Doesn't well, I like believe that those edgy videos, those YouTube poops that came and went with internet trends, I believe that those are what the toilet heads in Skibbity Toilet represent. Look at the evidence. First, there's the fact that the characters are literally toilets, the place where you poop, like a YouTube poop. Pretty yeah. direct connection yeah. there. Second, there's the fact that the heads of all the Skibbity Toilets are straight from Gary's mod, Half-Life, SFM, drawn yet another direct connection. There's also some more subtle hints as well if you look between the lines. In episode 4, there's a subtle background detail that shows how humans become toilet people as soon as they're exposed to the influence of the toilets. We pan across a normal restaurant, the toilets march in, and suddenly people are transformed- uh, semi-normal. They have toilets as the seats into more toilet heads. Some of those toilet heads even rise through the ranks, appearing in later episodes as leaders of the toilet army. Oh, it is the definition cool. of virality. The toilet people are a disease that's spreading just like a video going viral in the early days. We also know that the events of the series are happening sometime in the past. In episode 20, after going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the G-Man, the camera titan flies away, flying past two very important buildings, the Twin Towers. Notice here how it's an exact replica, straight oh, down yeah. to the spire at the top of one of those buildings. This tells us that the events well, of the series okay. predate the events of September 11th, 2001. Now, admittedly, YouTube poops didn't exist back then. They originated back in 2004, but websites yeah. like Newgrounds did exist back then. And Gmod videos were also big in the early internet days, like around 2006. So while it's not an exact timeline match, this toilet world hmm. isn't meant to be some dystopian future. Instead, it's much more of a dystopian past, a reference to an earlier time gone by. Also, just take a look at the way that the Skibbity Toilets get stronger throughout the 50-episode series. While the cameramen yeah, okay. develop new technology technology and techniques to get the upper hand in the battles, the toilets instead repurpose, they remix, they reuse- Oop. Hold on folks, we'll be right back. And we're back. Use the stuff that the cameramen leave behind. If that spirit of remixing isn't just the pure essence of what is YouTube poop, I don't know what is. And then look what you have on the flip side. You have the film, music, and television industry literally represented by audiovisual equipment. Cameras, speakers, TVs. It does oh, not yeah. get more direct than that. Who else would That's serve as clever. the perfect antagonist for the literal embodiment of YouTube poop than legacy media? Digital content like YouTube poops are made from reusing and rehashing content from those three industries. Just like how the skibbity toilets get stronger by repurposing the tech that they find on the camera, speaker, and TV men. Need more proof? The camera, speaker, and TV men being metaphors for the big three media mm. industries has actually been teased throughout the entirety of the series. Back in the beginning of Skibbity Toilet, when we were just dealing with toilets and cameras, we could see a clear hierarchy amongst the ranks of the cameras. While the grunts were all the small, closed-circuit TV-style cameras, the more advanced and the more movie-like the camera became, oh, the yeah. higher up it was. The big movie studios big were literally the most powerful entities. Also, take a look at how the TV titan goes about destroying destroying the toilets. It uses this sound. Wait, that's the THX it intro thing. an awful thing. lot like the old THX intro sound. Yeah. Huh. I recognize this. Furthermore, there's the main theme song that's used by the speakermen whenever they attack. That sweet bop is the 1985 song Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears for Fears. Well, apparently are still touring. Good for them. Not only oh, is this nice. song very yeah, nice. on the nose in terms of the theme for the series, two factions at war trying to rule the world, but it's also just an old song from the 80s. It's dated, just like the media it's meant to represent in the series. Media that in the real world is actively fighting off the digital video threat. But there's something off about that, right? It feels like the series wants us to be rooting for the cameraman. In fact, there's this one scene in episode 49 that clearly establishes the toilet heads as the bad guys. Occasionally throughout the series, you'll have a character speak in some distorted voice. What's actually going on there is that they're speaking in reverse. And in that particular episode, the TV says to the toilet what sounds like, you are so bad, when the whole thing's reversed and cleaned up. <laughs> But, uh, oh, there's I hit it. no world where we should be rooting for traditional media, right? Especially when you're talking about a digital series. I know the show's odd, but the idea that we're supposed to be sympathizing with some of the least sympathetic industries on the planet seems like a step too far. Meanwhile, we're supposed to dislike the internet video side? I mean, the series got popular because of internet videos. Spoiler yeah. alert! Singing meme face in a toilet? Yeah, that's the kind of thing that would never happen in a world of TV or film. We are clearly missing <laughs> yeah. some sort of key point here. We have our two sides clearly established, but who or what exactly are we supposed to be root? Also, here's a question. Where did these toilets come from? According to episode one, it was just some random toilet in a person's house that went, and that's it. And then it just spread like wildfire. 
rooting for here. Well, that, my friends, is where the most recent episodes come in. At the end of episode 47, we see a G-Man toilet destroy the POV cameraman, just like we've seen him do in many other episodes before. But then, through the lens of our fallen camera, we see someone coming into frame. Whoa. And it's not just anyone, it's a person. We haven't seen a human in the series for literally dozens of episodes, and yet, out of the blue, a person appears? And it's not just any person either. This character it's looks an awful lot like De Fuchs' channel avatar, doesn't it? Like I mentioned it earlier, is. humans didn't really play much of a role in this franchise prior to this very moment. In the beginning, humans were just cannon fodder for the toilet overlords, but now we have one of these humans. In fact, the human who's making the series inserting himself back into the narrative. Oh. And not just here, he's also hidden indoors during the opening seconds of episode 45. But why? One does not simply self-insert their avatar into a two billion view a month series so lightly when the story no, is do so not. deep in its own narrative. Unless you have a greater role to play in the story you're about to tell. Defuk clearly has a love and passion for this style of video. Before Skibbity exploded, he had created dozens of videos in his SFM YouTube poop format. Yeah, in fact, his two Lee. most popular long-form videos on his channel are, still to this day, SFM animations that he made years ago. That being said, I also don't think he totally dislikes the world of TV, movies, and music either. Why would he make them the protagonists of his epic internet series if he did? I think Defuk, like many hmm. other creators, aspires to do this work on a professional level. And you can tell that desire I mean, for a, a professional, higher caliber of work in the way that he's handled the Skibbity Toilet series. Each episode has seen an escalation of the animation, the character work getting better, the ideas bigger and grander. He has literally turned what started as a YouTube poop into an epic action movie that hangs with some of the best content that I've seen this year. So what gives? What is the story that he's trying to mm. tell us through Skibbity Toilets? Well, to me, it's clear from the story that's laid out in front of us that Defuk sees himself quite literally in the middle of these two loves of his that are currently at odds. Notice what his character is doing throughout the series so far. He's picking up the broken remains of the camera heads, the broken remains of traditional media. Creators like Defuk got into making this kind of content on the internet, not just because it was fun and easy, but deep down, they wanted to emulate the TV, film, and music that they enjoyed consuming. Defuk wants to take the yeah. elements that make the new and old media so great and fuse them together. He oh, is the merge point. He is the it. next step in the evolution of the medium. He is the missing link. He wants to be the very nexus of media. Oh, the point where it all becomes one, or at least becomes a lot more similar? No, that's not the word. Uh, eh, Matt Pat, take it away. I mean, look no further than Skibbity Toilet itself. The series starts off as a simple gag that latched onto a viral internet meme in episode one. But by episode 50, suddenly we have cinematic camera changes, complex sound design, dazzling visuals and special effects that feel like they belong more in the MCU than a YouTube poop. Skibbity <laughs> yeah. Toilet isn't an epic takedown of toxic internet content or the corrupt industrial bigwigs at the studios. Instead, it's evidence that these two things can co-mingle. These two titans of entertainment can coexist together and be stronger as a result. That the best of both worlds can be brought together for the greater good of entertainment. Dad, so where does this franchise end up going from here? Well, we have ourselves our new protagonist in Defuk, who will eventually take center stage, taking it upon himself to save the world that he loves, the worlds of internet memedom and mainstream media. He's going to turn out to be the Neo of this universe. He oh. is the chosen one. He'll be the one who'll be able to marry both sides of this war together and show that if the two sides put aside their differences, they can create something truly magical. Or who knows, maybe he'll get a movie deal out of it. And then truly, you've had the merge. They the can world. become but one! Hey, speaking of blending ideas from multiple industries into one magical product, I want to thank our sponsor for today's video, Opera. With its build- And that's where we're going to have to cut. Well, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. The link will be in the description below, and I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.